If you guys are looking for the cheapest and most reliable coins on the market, make sure to head over to utnice.com. You're going to click on FIFA 21 right here. Choose your platform you're buying coins on. Choose the amount of coins you'd like to purchase. Click buy now and then put in the discount code CHIEF for 6% off your order. Now let's go ahead and let's get right into this video. What's up guys, it's Fief Chief here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are going to be looking at the best Premier League players in FIFA 22 as released by EA. Now if you guys are enjoying the content or you are new around here, I ask that you do please hit that subscribe button. We're going to try to hit 20,000 subscribers. But yeah, yeah. What's up guys, it's Fief Chief here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the best Premier League players in FIFA 22 as released by EA. Now if you guys are enjoying the content or you are new around here, I ask that you do please hit that subscribe button, I really do appreciate it, and then drop a like on the video as well. It does really, really help me out. And then make sure to check out all those links in the description like Twitch for all my daily live streams, discord for all sorts of trading advice and investments and everything else down there as well and with that said let's go ahead and let's jump right into these ratings so ea have released the top 20 highest rated players in the premier league so let's start off here we're looking at an 86 rated Jao cancelo card here upgraded from his 83 rated card last year an unbelievable card here probably still not going to be as good as kyle walker in game but a more well-rounded card in terms of the dribbling, shooting, passing, still going to be a very, very good right back and wildly expensive at the beginning of the year. Next up, we got Hugo Lloris here, holds his rating at 87, just a good keeper every year, basically. The only problem he ever really has is that kicking, which really still isn't that big of an issue. So Hugo Lloris is going to be another solid keeper in FIFA 22. Next up, we actually have Paul Pogba getting upgraded to an 87 from his 86 rated card in FIFA 21. I mean, this guy's just a staple midfielder every year. Going to be very expensive. He gets great links. He's Manchester United. He's French. Just he can play CDM, center mid, cam, wherever you want him to go. This guy can do it. And I'd imagine he's still going to have those five star skills and that four star weak foot, which make him so valuable. Next up, we have Trent Alexander-Arnold again, holds his 87 rating from FIFA 21. And honestly, this card's just straight fodder. He's terrible. He's absolutely terrible. It's a shame there isn't much in terms of his play style that you can do to make this card more usable, but he's just not going to be a good player. He's not going to be in anyone's team, and he's just not a great card in FIFA, but he's 87 rated. Next up, we have Jaden Sancho here, 87 rated again this year, holds his rating, and another pace downgrade for Jaden Sancho. People are very confused about this. He had, I believe, his 88 pace in FIFA 20. He had 83 pace, I believe, in FIFA 21. And now he's going to be down to 81 pace. I mean, they, EA just think this kid's lost his legs already, I guess. 76 shooting, again, could be a bit low for a guy who gets the amount of goals that he gets. But the dribbling, the passing, the, the pace, the shooting, the combination of it all with the five-star skill moves that I'd assume he's going to have is still going to be great. Next up, we have Andy Robertson here. Again, was 87 rated last year and 87 again this year. You wouldn't think he's an 87 rated card just off of his stats here. I mean, they're great stats. He's going to be a great left back, 84 pace, 82 defending, 76 physical. But it's a card that you look at and you're like, even like an 80 whatever rating Kieran Tierney is holds up to those stats, whereas Robertson's 87 rated. But well-rounded outside back here, left-footed left back. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be a great card. Just probably going to be a little more expensive than he should be considering his rating. But moving into the next ones, a couple city players which we absolutely love to see. Ruben Diaz here upgraded from an 81 rated card to an 87 rated card the best center back in the world you absolutely love to see it now what's very confusing about this to me is a lot of center backs this year are getting massive pace upgrades however ruben diaz has given a plus six overall but has been given a pace downgrade which is a weird one for me i mean you watch him play he's quicker than 61 pace i mean 
Pepe's got 80 pace, for God's sake. I don't understand that, but Ruben Diaz, 87 rated. Things you love to see. Next up, we've got Raheem the Dream Sterling here. Holds his 88 rating from FIFA 21. Again, just going to be a great winger. High pace, high dribbling, good shooting, can pass the ball. Just a great winger again. You know what Raheem Sterling brings. He's going to be fast, he's good on the ball, and he can finish for you. Next up, we have another big upgrade here. Romelu Lukaku getting upgraded from an 85 rated card to an 88 rated card after his move to Chelsea here. 84 pace, 87 shooting, 83 physical. Going to be the headliner stats there. Again, we're talking three, four weeks into the game. This card is not going to be worth picking up compared to some other options for the price because he's going to feel clunky in game. He doesn't have the skill moves. The dribbling and passing aren't quite there, but I mean, he's still going to be a great card. Good pace, good physical, great shooting. He's going to finish everything for you. Still going to be a great striker. Next up, a very controversial one. We've got Bruno Fernandez here, who was only upgraded from an 87 to an 88. A lot of people would have liked to see him get to an 89, including myself. Some people would argue a 90. I would say an 89 would be a fair rating for Bruno Fernandez, but he's got a fantastic card here with the 84 dribbling, 86 shooting, 89 passing, being those headliner stats, and then still great pace defending and physical. But I've got a couple bones to pick with those stats regarding another player, which we'll get to in a bit here. Next up, we have another controversial one, Sadio Mane here, only getting dropped from a 90 to an 89. Now, I would have expected him to drop lower, one, because Bruno Fernandez is levels above him. And two, another player that we'll find is 89 rated that is levels above him that was downgraded to the same rating as him. But we'll get into that. Sadio Mane, 89 rating. Great card here, though. Great, great card. And imagine he'd be four star, four star again. And that's what we like to see. Decent card. Ederson here, who I believe is the best goalkeeper in the world, could be the best goalkeeper in FIFA as well. 89 rated Ederson here gets an upgrade from his 88 rated card in FIFA 21. I mean, this just looks fantastic. I mean, the handling isn't great, but 87 diving, 88 reflexes, 93 kicking, 88 positioning, and high speed as well at 64. He's going to be a great keeper in this upcoming FIFA. And next we move on to Allison, who was in fact downgraded from a 90 to an 89 here. Same rating as Ederson now. They EA have decided they are level. But Allison, again, another great card here. 86 diving, 89 reflexes, 86 handling, 84 kicking, 90 positioning. He's going to be a solid keeper. You know that for sure. Next up, we have a big upgrade here. Hyungman Son goes from an 87 to an 89 rated card. Again, I would have expected him to go to an 88, not an 89, but word on the street is this guy has five-star skills, five-star weak foot with these stats. He's going to be, what, top five most expensive gold rare cards in the game? I mean, we're talking Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, and then it could be so on after that. He's just, he's unbelievable. Five star, five star with this card. He is going to be absolutely wicked in game. Next up, we got two Liverpool boys here. Both were 90 rated in FIFA 21, now downgraded to 89. Van Dyke and Salah. Van Dyke, I understand, being injured the whole season, not really seeing much out of him. Getting a minus one to an 89 seems fair. Salah, I have no clue why he was downgraded. He had another unbelievable season, one of the most un most underrated players in the world for me. I think Mohamed Salah is unbelievable and did not deserve a downgrade at all, especially considering that Salah and Mane are now the same rating. I feel as if, honestly, Mane should have gone to 89 or 88, and Salah should have stayed 90. No matter what, Salah should be higher rated than Mane. And if you wanted to make Salah 89, I feel like you need to make Mane and Son 88 because I think he's just a level above them. And moving on here, we actually have two guys that were upgraded from 88s to 90s, plus twos for both Conte and Harry Kane, the best defensive midfielder in the world and probably the second best striker in the world at the moment. Conte obviously going to be 
crazy expensive in FIFA 22. Unbelievable stats on that card. Going to be a great defensive midfielder. And then Harry Kane, I mean, he's going to finish everything for you. I'm hoping to see him get a five-star weak foot. But again, the pace and the dribbling isn't going to be enough to make him very, very meta. But a big passing boost for him there after all those assists linking up with Young Vinson throughout last season. And then we finally have the two highest rated cards in the Premier League, both 91 rated, Kevin De Bruyne and Cristiano Ronaldo. So starting with De Bruyne here, I think it's fair to leave him 91 rated. I mean, he didn't do anything crazy last season. He was injured for a good amount, but when he played, he was fantastic. The best midfielder in the world per usual. And being someone that watches De Bruyne week in and week out, I have a couple issues with this card. I really think De Bruyne is a guy that's got 80 pace. I mean, if you watch him on a counterattack, this guy just glides with the ball. He's he's actually very, very quick. I think De Bruyne could honestly have 80 pace. And I think he's a guy that could be up in the 70 defending area because we see Bruno Fernandez here has 70 defending. Kevin De Bruyne can put in some tackles if you watch this dude play defensively i think he's crazy crazy underrated but still a good card here but again i think he should have higher pace and a higher defending maybe like a plus four to both of those but otherwise seems fair and then finally the very very controversial one cristiano ronaldo getting a downgrade from a 92 to a 91 I don't think he deserved the downgrade because now he is lower rated than Lewandowski. I think it would have been fair to have Messi 93, Lewandowski, Ronaldo 92. But nonetheless, unbelievable card here for Cristiano Ronaldo. 87 pace, 88 dribbling, 93 shooting, 82 passing. He's great. And I've seen a lot of people complaining about the 87 pace. My thing is this guy is what, 36 now, I believe. I mean, to still have 87 pace on FIFA at 36 is almost unheard of. So very, very cool thing to see that they're not absolutely killing his pace down to like 82 or something. But he could even be a bit quicker than that. But yeah, my big issues with this list basically would just be Ronaldo being downgraded, um, Salah being downgraded, Son and Salah being the same rating, Mane and Salah being the same rating. And then Bruno, I think, should be an 89, I would say. And then Ruben Diaz's pace it has no business being that low. Get this man up to 70. Come on, EA. What are we doing? But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Those are the top 20 rated players in the Premier League in FIFA 22. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.